pray that wisdom and revelation flows freely unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind, not of me and all of you. Father, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these your precious people. Now, Father, I thank you right now that every ear is anointed to hear the word of God. Every heart is good ground to receive the word of God. And Father, your word says it will do what it sets out to do. And Father, we just release our faith on that right now. And we thank you in advance for a word that refreshes our spirit, refreshes our soul, God. And Father, we thank you right now that the Holy Spirit has a liberty, liberty to move in a mighty way in our homes in our offices, in our cars. Move in a mighty way. Have his way with us. Father, we thank you right now that the word of God will not return no. It will not return void to you. Father, you will perfect everything that concerns us as the word of God goes forth. And Father, we receive 100 fold. 100 fold on the seeds we've sown financially, on the seeds we've sown in the word of God, we receive wisdom, revelation, answers, and peace. Thank you, Lord. Father, we declare our minds are uncluttered, our minds are uncrowded, and our minds are unclouded as the Word of God goes forth. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to hop into the Word of God. Uh, uh, this evening here, and uh, we're going to have a good time in the Word. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. For a title tonight, I want to talk to you about conquering in the midst of, of a crisis. Conquering in the midst of a crisis. And, you know, the pandemic is going on, you know, throughout the world, so on and so forth, and, and, and there's been panic, but things are beginning to settle, and pe people are beginning to get an understanding on what's happening. But I want to talk about, you know, in the midst of, of, of chaos, in the midst of, of, of turbulent times, I want to talk about the posture of a conqueror, one who does not give up, cave in and quit. And I'm telling you, the Lord lives on the inside of you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And this is a word you need to lay hold on. I think we went through all the phases of what this thing can do, what it can be, so on and so forth. And now it's time to just conquer in the midst of chaos. I want you to write these, the, 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 these words down. When the, when, the, when, the, when the crisis first came out, we had questions. Number one, we had questions. Number two, we began to get answers. We, I'm sorry. Number two, we had fears. So we had questions and then we had fears because we didn't understand the thing. Everything was unknown. So we had questions and then we moved on to fears. But we begin to build our faith up in the word of God and we begin to build our faith up in prayer, so on and so forth. And then we went to the world gave us answers on what it was and, and, and the best way to hedge against it, so on and so forth. So there were questions, there were fears, and there were then answers on what we were dealing with. And let me say this to you. I said it Sunday, you can't shoot this thing with a gun. You can't arrest it, but you can know about it. So we had answers. And number four which was the most important time, I believe, of this crisis, is we got realities. We got realities. And the realities were, if you, if you do not clean your hands, if you, not, if you do not do what they say to do, you are highly uh, 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 probable to get this thing. You're a high risk to get it. And they told you, wash your hands, do this, do that, social distancing, six feet, so on and so forth. So the reality hit us that people are passing away from this. That's a reality. The reality is it has dramatically and drastically affected our economy. It has affected employment. It has affected businesses. It's, it's done all that. That is a reality in the world. But Sunday we talked about living in a higher spiritual reality. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't live in that realm. We live above that realm. So there are realities now. And the realities are either going to push you into conquering or it's going to cause you to give up, cave in, and quit. The last one after realities, now, first we had questions, second we had fears, third we had, we, we, we began to get answers, and fourth we, got, we, 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 we reached the reality of the thing. But the last one now <clears throat> 
is I think is the most important one for you as a believer. And the last phase is adjustments. It's time to make adjustments. It's time to accept the reality. It's time to accept your kids are at home and you're going to and your homeschooling. It's time to accept uh, uh, what, what what the market is doing. It's time to accept what the employment rate is. What's going on with the employee uh, 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 the emplo- uh, um, the unemployment rate? What's going on with that? It's, it's it's time to accept it and and not just accept it, give up, okay, and then quit. Adjust to it, and we adjust in prayer. We adjust by pushing back against it. But we can't just act like it's not happening. We have to adjust. And I want you to adjust your posture tonight going forward as a conqueror. As someone, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on around me, there can be a storm going on in the boat, around the boat like it was with Jesus. And I will stand up to that storm and I will say, peace, be still. You need to tell your mind, your soul, hey, be still, buddy. It's time for you to stay out of the future Keep your souls out of the future, wondering what's going to happen on your job, wondering when the market is going to come back up, wondering how is your family doing. Give the angels charge over your families. One of the greatest things I've learned in this thing is is, is an absolute limitation as a human being, and I'm so glad I understand that. Listen, I can't be in Georgia and Florida at the same time. I can't be in North Carolina with my family and in Florida at the same time. I can't be in South Carolina and in Florida at the same time. I can't be in Texas with my family and in Florida at the same time. And that is a reality, and it's, it's, it's exposing my human limitations. But guess what? As a believer, I will send my angels forth to protect my aunts, to protect my cousins, to protect my nieces and watch over them, to protect my sister who's in the healthcare field, to protect her because now I'm in the reality mode, I'm making adjustments, and I have fully realized my human limitations. But as a born-again believer, my prayers avail much. My prayers will go out. Favor will go ahead of me. Favor will go ahead of them. I give angels charge over their lives Every single day. And guess what? As a believer, as someone who's adjusting, I want you to adjust as of tonight to being a conqueror. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Conquering in the midst of crisis. If you're not conquering, if if, if we don't make the adjustment to conquer in the midst of a crisis, we will nurse and rehearse the crisis. We'll just keep letting it beat us up. And the reality is here. So it's time to adjust, and I want you to adjust your posture to a conqueror in the midst of a crisis. Satan wants us to exaggerate the worst and ignore God's promises of goodness. The word says, surely goodness and mercy will follow us. It hasn't abandoned us. It's not even ahead of us. It is there if you make a stop. It's right there when you turn around. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy in your finances. Goodness and mercy concerning your family. Goodness and mercy concerning your provision. It is right there with you. Listen, God has not abandoned this world. God has not abandoned you. What God, what, what, what God is warning is, hey, stand up and stagger not at my promises. You are a conqueror. Matter of fact, the word says you're more than a conqueror. What is a conqueror? It's a person who conquers a place or people. And then this time, we're conquering a place. We're conquering something, and in, 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 we got to conquer what's happening in the natural in the spiritual realm. We have to, Sunday we talked about it, we have to have a life of prayer. Why? We're going to push back and continue to push back against the reality of what's happening with this crisis. And we're going to do it with prayer. We're going to do it by faith. We're going to do it with prayer, and we're going to do it by faith. So a person is, he conquers a place or people. And one definition says a conqueror is a thorough defeater. He's thorough in his defeat when he defeats. He's thorough more than a conqueror. He's thorough when he defeats. Another one says one who constantly defeats. See, as a believer, you can't lose. As a believer, you can't lose. You're more. God said, he says, you're more than a conqueror. You're more than somebody who thoroughly defeats. You're more than someone who constantly defeats. And I came tonight to say, stir yourself up. The reality is here. Now let's adjust. We walk by faith and not by sight. We stagger not at the promises of God. Favor goes ahead of us in all that we do. Listen, it's time to adjust 
and, and, and walk in your, this is not a word, your Christianness. Amen. That's what I want you to do. I want you to walk in the promises of God. I want you to walk in what God has promised you. And God says, listen, I won't leave you or forsake you, but you must walk and live this thing out by faith. By faith. Glory to God. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans uh, chapter 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 8. Woo! More than conquerors, the word says. More than conquerors, the word says. More than conquerors, the word says. So you got to pull out your strong concordance. You got to pull out your Bible and you got to pull out all the promises of God concerning your provision, concerning your health, concerning your protection. You got to pull them out and you got to put them in you. You have to put them in you. Why? To walk out this more than a conqueror uh, life that I'm talking about. Verse 37. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Through him that loves us. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm telling you, you need to just stand up and beat yourself on the chest and say, I am more than a conqueror. How can you even say that? Because of God's love for me. It's not my love for God that causes me to be more than a conqueror. It's God's love for me that causes me to be more than a conqueror. That causes my children to be more than a conqueror. That causes my business to be more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. At some point, you have to know that you're more than a conqueror. I want to drop this in your spirit. <clears throat> Glory to God. <laughs> in action, one word, I-N-A-C-T-I-O-N, in action in the word of God will slowly erode our confidence and competence and ability to endure this thing. Inaction in the word. What does that simply mean? Not in it. Inaction in the word simply means I don't, I'm not taking any action in the word. There, there is no prayer. I'm not printing out no promises. I don't want your prayer confessions you emailed out. Let me tell you something. All we have is the word of God. Your human mind can't even comprehend the complexities, it can't even quantify the future or what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, is it up, is it down, is it in, is it out, is it a go, is it a no-go, should we stop, should we go, it can't even comprehend it. And what happens, if you have an inaction in the word of God, it'll wear you down. And we don't want that to happen. You'll find yourself depressed walking around the house. You'll find yourself reading every article. You'll find yourself just staring at the news, the, the, the news broadcast there. Why? What's happening? You have an inaction in the word, but you're overzealous in what the world is reporting. Listen, we've went through it. We've went through the questions. We've gone through the fears. We've gotten the answers on how to deal with this thing. We don't have a vaccine yet, but we know how to prevent it from, 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 from. We know how to lower the percentage of us catching this thing. We know how to do that. And we know the reality of it. We know the reality of it is that people, hospitals are maxed out. Our medical system is maxed out. We need supplies ASAP. We know the realities of it, but we must adjust now. We must adjust to it. And it's not an onslaught against your faith to adjust to what you see. It's the reality. Now, we walk by faith and not by sight, but it's not an onslaught against your faith if you're adjusting to what you see. Listen, mandates are coming down, you know, stay at home, so on and so forth, this, that, and the other. You got to adjust. You got to adjust. They tell us in Florida, hey, 50 or less, uh, less than 50 people at, at one time, you got to adjust to that. It's really just that simple. Well, I'm not going to do it. My God told me that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you're going to have handcuffs on quoting that same scripture in jail. You got to abide by what the government and what the law of the land is saying. What are we doing? We're adjusting. We're adjusting. You're homeschooling your kids, and it's like, my God, I got to do my work. I have a conference call. 
and they're running around and this, that, and that, and you're trying to keep them uh, 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 attentive to their schoolwork, and you're trying to handle your job. Listen, you got to adjust. You have to adjust. One thing I can tell you for sure, if you have kids at home, uh, stop thinking they're going to conduct themselves like they're in a classroom. They have not crossed that bridge yet. (laughs) And what they're saying is, I'm at home. Well, surely I can go upstairs. Surely I can just pop off this lesson and go outside and ride my bike. Man, their wheels are still going. They're in home mode. Now, give them another 30 days or whatever it is, and I pray to God that this thing has tapered. We push back against it, and, 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 and everything begins to return to normal. But until then, even your children are adjusting to being at home with you. Not you just adjusting to being at home with them. They are adjusting to being at home with you. And you got to understand that reality. Husband and wives, listen to me. Each one of you are adjusting to being at home with one another. And the Lord told me to tell you tonight, don't choke on one another. Don't do that. Don't run nobody out the room. That's, I tell you what, the, <laughs> man, I can be on a call and my wife can be on a call and I can walk in and I can say, Hey, did you pick up the mail? And, and she's fanning me off. She, she don't say anything. She'll just go, get out of here. I'm like, man, I'm, <laughs> man alive, this is your husband talking. Hey, buddy, I'm at work here. Oh, the husband may do the same thing. You got to adjust to that. And you just got to back out of the room like Noah's children did. You got to back out and, go and don't, go, don't, don't get your little feelings hurt. Why? You're adjusting to what you guys are now doing. What is that? You're in close proximity to one another. And you got to be there. You're going to be like that. Eight to ten. As a matter of fact, you're going to be like that for 24 hours a day. This thing is a test of all test on your patience. Amen. So Romans 8, uh, verse 37 through 39, he says, he says, you're more than a conqueror. And I want to keep hammering that home. You are more than a conqueror, but you, can, you can't have inaction in the word of God and think that, that, that your natural mind is going to just carry you through this and you not worry yourself literally to death. You got to get in your word. You have to read your word in the morning. You have to read your word before you have a cup of coffee. You got to get in the word of God. If you don't do that, you disseminate fear all around you. Panic. No information, no word. You just, you just, you just allow the, word, the world to just drag you along in their chaos and, and their ups and downs. And not saying, not saying that you, will, you won't have fear, you won't have concerns. We've said this earlier, you can have fear. You can have fear, but just don't let fear have you. Just don't be out of control with your fear. Listen, we respect it, but at some point, you got to deal with it. You got to cast down the imagination that's trying to exalt itself against your peace. Amen? Number one, out of Romans 8, number one, no situation in life can defeat us or dilute God's love for us. You need to know that about being more than a conqueror. No situation in life can defeat you or dilute God's love for you. And God says, I love you. It's my love for you that causes you to be more than a conqueror. Number two, we know that divine love and power we know that, div- according to Romans 8, divine love and power works for us and in us to triumph over all things. Over all things. It's his love. It's his love for us. It's working in us, and it causes us to triumph over all things. Listen, adjustments is a thing. you got to triumph over the adjustment. You got to make it, but you can't allow the adjustment to agitate you and cause you to want to get back to normal the way it used to be. No, what they're saying is you adjust to this. And when you adjust, whatever, whatever adjustment you make, know this, you're still going to try on. Well, I'm in sales and I'm kind of having to call people from, you know, from the house there. And I got to kind of show people stuff on the computer. Well, I tell you what, become the number one calling house showing uh, uh, on the computer, salesman it is. Why? You're adjusting, but guess what? You're triumphing. You're more than a conqueror. So just because you had to make the adjustment doesn't mean that you, you're, you're conquering tapers off. No, you're more than a conqueringness. It continues to go in whatever realm the adjustment lands you in. Amen? Glory to God. Number three, we share in, 
We should be sharing in the victory of being an overcomer. In other words, if I'm overcoming, if I'm more than a conqueror, when I speak to a believer, speak to my neighbor, speak to the person when I'm out in public, we should be sharing this. Or we should be sharing Christ, sharing why we're so peaceful, sharing why our numbers have not come down, sharing why everything is still going great in our families, sharing why everything is still going great in our companies. Why? We should be sharing this victory, this more than a conquer lifestyle that we're living in. Hallelujah. Watch this now. <laughs> this is big. You're more than a conqueror. What does that mean? We have conquered the conqueror. <laughs> we have conquered the conqueror. My peace has conquered the fear that the devil tries to bestow upon me. My disposition, my outlook, According to Jeremiah 29, he says, listen, God is in the business of knowing the expected end. The expected end is God's business, not ours. So what does that mean? We, we, we have conquered the conqueror. Our future is bright. Although the enemy wants, us to for, wants to forecast to us, hey, you may be laid off now. You may lose this. You may lose that. I don't know if it's going to be this. I don't know if it's going to be that. I don't know if it's going to be this when this thing ends. Listen, I hear that, but listen, but here's, here's the bottom line. My faith and your faith needs to be, listen, I hear what you're forecasting, but I'm more than a conqueror. I hear what you're forecasting, but I'm more than a conqueror. I hear what you're forecasting. Well, if it changes, just know this. In that change, I'll still be on top. What? You sound kind of arrogant? No, I just sound, I sound kind of like Romans verse eight, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 through 39. That's what I sound like. I am more than a conqueror. So that means situations, circumstances, and environments, they don't determine my productivity. What determines my productivity is greater is he that lives in me than he that's in this world. I'm not subject to it. So you've conquered the conqueror. You've conquered the conqueror. Think about that. The same slew-footed joker that comes to kill, that comes to steal, according to John 10, and come to destroy, kill and steal your peace. You have conquered that conqueror. How do I know that? You need to wake up in joy, go to sleep in joy. You need to be skipping through your house. You need to be walking down your hallway, drop down and get 10 push-ups in because you can't go to the gym. You need to be feeling good about yourself in the midst of, hey, I'm out of the reality phase. I know what this thing is. I have adjusted. So guess what? Me and my wife, we have Bible study every evening at 8 o'clock. And what are we talking about? We're just going to pick a subject. We're going to talk about it. What, what are we doing? We've made the adjustment. We've made it. I have a prayer schedule for my family, so on and so forth. We wake up, we pray at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or whatever that is before the kids get going, da 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 And at lunch, we finally got a chance for all five of us to sit down and eat lunch. We got a schedule for that. And then the kids are done with school at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Whatever time you deem, they're done with it. Then after that, what do we do? Well, we go in the backyard, we play some volleyball. We go for a stroll in the, in the subdivision. What am I doing? I've adjusted. And when you make your adjustment, know this. You're in control of your schedule. Unless God interrupts it. You can set your prayer schedule. You can set your lunch time with your family. You can set the time the kids stop doing work. You can do that, but you got to make the adjustment and receive. This is the way it is. You've conquered the conqueror. According to Romans 8, <coughs> in Christ, we will prevail out of this thing mightily. We will come out of this thing without a smell of smoke. We will come out of this thing prevailing mightily. We will come out of this thing with new ideas. We will come out of this thing leaner in our operations. We will come out of this thing more, more than conquerors. We will come out of this thing smarter, more smarter. We will come out of this thing more smarter than our equipment, more smarter than our business, more smarter than the world economy. We will come out of this thing prevailing mightily. Listen, now is not the time to allow the world to dictate to you what the future is going to be. Now is the time for you to say, you know what? My forecast for the future is I'm conquering now. I'll conquer then. I'm prosperous now. I'll be prosperous then. Well, they say this is going to change. That's fine. That's fine. 
Wherever I go, whatever I do, whatever state I'm in, whatever job I'm on, however they restructure things, it doesn't matter. I'm like a basketball in the swimming pool. Put me on the bottom, and I'm coming to the top. I'm more than a conqueror. I've set my thermostat to that, and that's the end of the story. Well, you're just not facing reality. Oh, I went through the reality phase. Trust me, I went through it. I went through the questions phase. I went through getting the answers phase. I went through the fears phase. But now I have made the adjustment. God is my source. I know that. And he gives me daily bread. I know that. He gives the angels charge over my life. I know that. Listen, I know he won't leave me nor forsake me. I know too much of the word of God not to make the adjustment and forge forth in faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hard times and challenges only appear in these times. Hard times and challenges only appear impossible if God is left out of the remedy equation. Challenges during this time, when we're supposed to be living like more than conquerors, they're only impossible or seem impossible only if God is left out of the remedy equation. One of the quickest places you can get is to your human limitations right now and realize you can't control nothing. You are not omnipotent. You're not all-knowing. So you don't know tomorrow. That's why God told us, keep your soul out of tomorrow and focus on today. And you, if you haven't reached your human limitations, you're worrying a lot. You're still worrying. You're still, you, 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 you're still freaked out. See, the quicker you can get to, look, I, can't, I can only do preventive measures. But there's someone higher who watches over my life. There's someone higher who sends me, leads me and guides me in my goings. My goings are of God. There's someone higher that's got his angels in charge over, uh, gives his angels charge over my life. Listen, I was, I was out, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a preacher, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pastor, but I got weapons. <laughs> I own them. <laughs> They're legal. I like to shoot them. I really do. And guess what? I was out. You know, I said, well, shoot, I mean, me and my wife, she's got a weapon too. Me and my wife, she can, we can go to the gun range here and, ju and just fire some off. Let me go get some ammunition and buy some. And by God, I was in there buying ammunition, and I was behind a guy, and I don't like to be nosy when people are buying stuff, but I seen that little ticker on the, uh, on the register there, and that thing rung up $2,400 worth of ammunition. And I said to myself, this guy think the world is coming to an end, but his only hope, he ain't thinking about no angels because he bought that. He bought a 210 shotgun. He bought a 12 gauge shotgun. He bought a 45. He bought him a Glock 40. He bought four weapons and all that ammunition. What is he saying? Listen, uh, I, I, I don't even know if he's born again. I don't know if he know God. But what he's saying is my form of protection is this. And all I'm saying as a believer, my form of protection is first angels and then Mr. AR. It's really just that simple. And it's legal. So don't, don't send me no nasty emails. But the higher thing for my protection for my family and my house is angels. I give the angels charge over my life. Glory to God. Hard times and challenges only appear impossible when God is left out of the remedy equation. So for that man, I don't know if God was left out of the remedy equation, but for him, his remedy for hard times and anybody that wants to come in his house was $2,400 worth of ammunition. Legally, I guess, I would assume. But that's his remedy. And some people stop right there. But for you as a believer, you have angels. <laughs> Glory to God. You have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Glory to God. All right, let's keep going here. Man, oh, man. <clears throat> Here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk in God, godly confidence. I want you to walk in godly confidence and have a sense, watch this phrase, have a sense of circumstantial goodness around you. See, so you got to have a sense of circumstantial goodness around you. I don't know what circumstance you may land in. I don't know what circumstance your job has you in. I don't know about the hours, your field of expertise, how you're handling your customers. I don't know. But listen, you're going to find yourself in circumstantial goodness. You've got, to walk, you've got to walk like that. It's, it's not all normal. I know it's not all normal. It's some, some things are circumstantial. Most things are circumstantial right now. So what do you do? Make the best of it. You're more than a conqueror. Listen, I walk in circumstantial goodness. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how many hours they could. I, 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 I walk in circumstantial goodness. And at any 
time. The Bible says in Luke 6, men give into your bosom. That's more income streams than your job. That's more income streams than your business. You got to release your faith and release it and say, earth on earth what's mine. Favor with the lending companies. Favor with the credit card companies. Favor on my loans. On earth what's mine. Why? Because you walk with more than one income. You have several income streams as a believer. But if you're, if you're clogged down in natural worry, you can't even speak the words. I receive unexpected income. I want you to repeat that after me. I receive unexpected income. I receive favor on my job. I receive gainful employment. I receive customers still coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I receive circumstantial goodness. While every other salesman is trying to figure it out, I figured out, you got to say, I figured out that I'm more than a conqueror, and I receive circumstantial goodness. Super recall to the customers I've sold to in the past. Super recall to the customers I sold this product to in the past. And guess what? They are prepared to buy. They're ready to buy. They have the money to buy. And, it, and, 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 and my declaring to bring them in is not going to put them in debt. They are fully prepared and ready to release towards me or my business or my product. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to James real quick. James 1. Let me get this ready for me, those translations that I sent back, uh, message, the message translation, please, and the Amplified. James 1. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> man, oh man. Circumstantial goodness. Mm, mm, mm. I, think I, lost, I think I lost a lot of folks when I said own a weapon. My God, I guess, I guess we're not supposed to even have them. But I tell you what, it's okay to have them. They're fun to have. We don't walk around trying to pull them on nobody, nobody like that, which is just, just, just fun to have. And if the shooting range would, would have us, you know, uh, this week, I don't know if they would have us. You know, we, we, just, we, we just go up in there and just let them rip. Just let them rip. <clears throat> let them rip in the shooting range. James 1. <clears throat> uh, verse 2. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and, 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 and goodly apparel, glory to God. And there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him. <clears throat> you have respect to him. Watch this now. You have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit you there in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand you there and sit under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Listen, in this time of pandemic, Set your thermometer on giving. Don't have 30 things of tissue and look down on those who are scrambling to find it. No favoritism. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Release towards your neighbor. Find out who has a need. Why? Because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to find yourself judging based on looks. Oh, my God, they got two good cars. They got two good I'm not going to walk over there and ask him if they need anything. Are you kidding me? What if they say, I need prayer? You better be ready to pray for them. But we're not going to play favoritism in this time. Listen, people are hungry. People need lights. People need supplies. Some people need transportation. And if the Lord leads you, listen, don't be partial in that. Love your neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to say this to you. Um, <clears throat> well, I want to ask you this question. What posture should I have as I get deeper in this adjustment? What posture should I have as I get deeper in this adjustment? What posture should I have? Media, I gave you the wrong scripture. I just, I just figured out. It was James 2. I'm going back to James 1. Sorry about that. Uh, but don't be partial in, 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 in your thing. I'm sorry. Uh, what posture should I have? What posture should I have once I make the adjustment? Here's the word that comes to mind. A firmness on the word of God. A firmness on the word of God. 
our firm foot planted in the word of God and God's promises. And I'm telling you, don't look back. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. All I know is Isaac sold in the land of famine because Isaac, I, I believe Isaac had to prove to himself, hey, I just don't believe God's promises when things are going good. I believe them when they're going good. They're going great. They're going the best. And I believe them when it's famine. You got to let yourself know that. This is the time the Lord told me today, Derek, every promise in the Bible over your life as a believer he said, what's happening in your life, he said, this time is a great revealer. He says, a great revealer to where you are, where you are in your faith. Where are you in your faith? Where are you in your giving? Where are you in your lending? He says, a great revealer. Where are you in your trust? Trust God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Where are you? Acknowledge him in all your ways. Where are you in that? He says, a great revealer. And fear wants us to latch on to the world's ways and not be more than conquerors. It's a great revealer. It's revealing some things. Hallelujah. Now, James 1. <clears throat> Have a firmness in the word of God. Have a firmness in the promises of God. Have a firm foot in the promises of God. And just like Abraham, when they say, hey, you're going to have a baby. You guys are going to have a baby. Man, he said, what? How in the world am I going to have a baby old and stricken? How am I going to do that? And then the Bible says, he staggered not at the promises of God. So you stagger when you don't have no, no firmness in the word of God. You kind of lean, you, you, you're all over the place. But when you plant your feet, it's hard for people to come move you. That's a firmness in the word of God. That's a firmness in the promises of God. Now is the time to take, to, now is the time to exercise yourselves unto godliness. Now is the time. Now is the time. I really, I really believe the Lord was trying to tell me, Derek, don't you come out of this thing and let this thing turn around and you didn't walk by faith in it. You didn't believe my word in it. You didn't walk by faith in it. You didn't believe my word in it. Don't you let, don't you let this thing come out on the other side. And on the other side, the world has proved to you that I'm your God. I'm your God. You obeyed me in the time of famine. You obeyed me when things were lean. You obeyed me when things got tough. You didn't obey your God. You didn't walk by faith. You didn't walk out promises. He said, don't get on the other side. And the world can go, na 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 boo boo See, you believe me. You just talk this God stuff. Don't let it happen. Exercise. Now's the time to exercise ourselves unto godliness. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. James 1. We're wrapping up here. I know dinner is on the stove. I know it's ready to go. I know you're ready to eat. I know you're ready to get to it. You may be out there grilling in the backyard. I don't know. <clears throat> you may be on your phone right over your grill. Just kind of listen to me. That's cool, too. Just save me a, save me a sandwich. It's got to be plant-based, though. <clears throat> Glory to God. James 1. Get this ready for me in the message and the, and, and, and the amplified media. James 1. James, a servant of God, <clears throat> a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Verse 2. My brethren, count. It all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3, knowing this, oh, glory to God. Knowing this, knowing this, firmness, knowing this, not wondering this, knowing this, not in action in the word, in the word, believing the word, walking out the word, knowing this. That the trying of your faith, the trying of your faith, what is that implying? I know it's hard. I know you kind of, you know, the, the, the world is saying this and the, 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 your word says this and, and, and the world is predicting this and, and the word is telling you to, to, to kind of walk it out and, 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 and the word is saying this and, and, and the word is saying, the, wor the, the word is saying, I got you covered. I know it. He said, your faith is being tried. He said, but trying of your faith does not work out. The trying of our faith, guess what it does? It works patience. And when it works patience, it says, Derek, don't you try to make a way here now. Don't you try to make stuff happen now. 
Don't you start just snatching up money and all this kind of stuff and, and running over here and, and buying 500 stocks to this and 500 stocks to that and I'm going to get rich and all this kind of stuff. He said, look, your faith is being tried. And he said, look, let the trying of your faith. You got to walk this thing out. You got to go through it with the word of God on your side, in your heart. That word hidden in your heart, it's time for that word to be revealed now. He says, look, it, 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 it works patience in you. So in actuality, it's trying to show you how to be richer when you come out of this thing. When the true riches come. He says, he says, here's the thing about patience. But let her, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire. Do you understand what he's saying? When we employ patience, he said, first of all, count it all joy. Count what joy? The trying of your faith. I know it's hard. I know you're wondering if I'm, if I'm going to come through. I know you're wondering why is this happening. He says, but it's not an elimination of your faith that you're wondering. He says, not an elimination of your faith that you have questions. He says, a trying of it. And in that trying, he wants us to endure on his side of the line. He doesn't want us to abandon the word. He doesn't want us to abandon the, the, the God's promises and hop over here to the world's strategies. He doesn't want us to do that. He says, I know it's hard. But you need to endure it. It's just trying your faith. Mm. Glory to God. So a couple of things come out of this. Um, Media, do you have the uh, message translation ready for me? Glory to God. <clears throat> James, a slave of God, and the master of Jesus, writing to the 12, 12 tribes, scattered to the kingdom come. Hello. Consider it sheer gift. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. Now, how many people know what I'm talking about? From all sides, the school system, a uh, 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 family going through stuff, family you want to get to in the sea of living, family you got, you know, on, on the other side of the world going through stuff. And God forbid if it hits your family, it's coming at you from all sides. And the enemy whispering things in your ear. And you got to be a wife. You got to be a husband. You got to raise your kids. You got you, you to let this word abide in you. Because the challenges are coming from all sides. He says, you know that under pressure, God almighty, under pressure, watch this, your faith, life is forced into the open. My faith life is, is forced into the open. Your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. Glory to God. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Somebody said, my faith endures. Listen to me. What is he saying? You try to dodge this hard time and not walk by faith? You try to scoot away and lean over to the world's way? You're missing a golden opportunity to be well-developed in your faith. What did I say earlier? God said, Derek, this is a great revealer now. When you come out on the other side, you're going to have to answer some hard questions. Did you lean on me? Yes, God, I leaned on you. Did, did, what did you do with your finances? Well, I either pulled away from you or I continued to, to sow into you. I'm going to have to answer some hard questions. He says, he, says, let this, he said, let it do its work in you so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Let me tell you something. If you're financially fearful right now, you're not developing nothing. But if you like the widow, if you like the widow who says, you know what, I, 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 I know what's going on all around me. I know that. But you know what I'm doing? You know what I do when I, when I give? I'm getting well developed, Jack. <laughs> because when I come out of this thing, I won't be deficient in any way. I'm going to know God is my source. I'm going to know my job is only a resource. I'm going to know my job is only a vehicle. I'm going to know God owns everything, but I'm going to come out of this thing well developed in my faith. Do you have it in the Amplified Media? Thank you, Lord. If I can see that in Amplified. James, a bond servant of God 
and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 Hebrew tribes scattered, scattered abroad among the Gentiles in the dispersion. Greetings, rejoice. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity (laughs) and inner peace. And let endurance now, glory to God, hallelujah, let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. That's what's going on here. That is the conqueror in the midst of in the midst of a crisis. That is being more than a conqueror right there. It's letting it's letting patience have a perfect work in us, causing us to be well developed when we come out of this thing, causing our faith to be well developed when we come out of this thing. Well, it sounds like you are ignoring what's going on around you, brother. I'm already past the reality. I've made the adjustment. I'm already past the fears. I made the adjustment. I'm already past the questions. I made the adjustment. I'm already past the answers. I know enough about this thing on how to conduct myself. I have made the adjustment and my faith just because it's being tried and tested doesn't mean I shrink in my disposition towards God. It means I swell up against anything that's coming against the word of God. Matter of fact, if it's contradicting what God's word says, I know it's not him. I know it's not him. Listen, this is the time to water. Why? The word says, he that waters, hey, they get watered. This is the time to scatter abroad. This is the time to show yourself that you believe what you believed before the crisis hit. Have those same confessions, amen? Whoa, why would he say count it all joy? Why would James say count it all joy? Why would he say that? He's speaking of a person who knows in the midst of, of trials, in the midst of uncertain times, in the midst of trials, in the midst of uncertain times, that they will be victorious. How in the world can I count it all joy when I wake up? Because my thermostat is already set on victory. Remember, more than a conqueror, I'm a thorough defeater. You are a thorough defeater. You are constantly defeating the enemy. And so that, that means when you open your mouth, when you wake up, before you go to bed, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Why? Man, my faith is being tested. It's being tried. But I promise you this. I'm also being well developed and my spiritual maturity is increasing in this thing. Because what the world is telling me to do, the word is saying not to do that. And guess where I'm leaning? I'm acknowledging God in all his ways. You you should be excited about becoming more spiritually mature in this time. But don't come out on the other side of this thing not realizing that you're more than a conqueror. See, a lot of times, I used to say that when I first got born again, when money was rolling in, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $8,000 the next month, $18,000 the next month, money rolling in. Man, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. And that company got sold, and all of a sudden, I pulled my hand back. Wait a minute now. Are you more than a conqueror or not? Which one is it? Oh, you was more than a conqueror when you was making good money. That's that's what you were saying. And exactly, that is exactly what I was saying when I first got born again. But now I have understanding. Now I have understanding. Now I know the power of the seed is never subject to the condition of the time. The power of my seed is never subject to to the condition of the times. So it can be up, down, in, out, pandemic, this, market falling, down, down, NASDAQ down, all that, but it does not dilute the power of my seed and your seed. And you got to know that. Why? Because you're more than a conqueror. So a person, the, the one who says count it all joy, they know something. They know in the midst of all this chaotic stuff, 
they're victorious. I want you to align your countenance with this right here. I already won. I'm already victorious. Align your posture with that right there. I'm already victorious. We've already won. We're already financially strong. You're not financially strong by preservation. You're financially strong by operating in Genesis 8.22. Why? I got $12,000 in the bank? Yeah, but you didn't give a dollar. You're not financially strong. Man, I got $1 in the bank, and I gave 25 cents. Oh, you just activated seed time, harvest time. You're financially strong. But the other person is dependent on the world to preserve them. You're a widow with a might. You put your seed in the ground. Why? You believe in the power of the seed over the condition of the times. You rich. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! This is just testing our faith, folks. It's a testing of our faith, according to James 1, but it should never be a, it should never be a questioning of our faith. Listen, you won't lack anything when this thing is over. Say it with me. I won't lack anything when this thing is over. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror. I thoroughly defeat everything in front of me. I defeat fear when it tries to come in front of me. I defeat lack when it tries to come in front of me. I defeat a worrisome future when it tries to present anxiety in front of me. I am a thorough, constant defeater against anything that tries to war against the peace of God in my life. And I know when my money's trying to tell me one thing, I'll take some of that money. I'll say, well, let me show you that you're not my God during this time. Let me show you the power of the seed during this time. And honey, I, I told my wife, I said, listen, I said, I said keep your ears open. I said, because, because God is going to bring somebody across our path that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna test what we're saying we want to do. And I don't care if it's a mortgage. I don't care if it's a car note. I don't care what it is. Lord... That was our prayer. You, 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 we're distribution centers. We want to offset some lack. You better watch what you say. Your family going to be calling you. I don't move off emotions. I move off what God is telling me. You can call 25 times all you want to. If God don't say do it, I ain't doing it. What I am saying is I am postured and I am yearning to be spiritually developed during this time. So bring on the mortgage, whoever it is. It may be a stranger in the grocery line. It may be a single mom standing there crying trying to pay for her groceries. It may be a single mom who, who, who's out there with a flat tire and don't have any, can't, can't buy the tire, can't call a tow truck. It may be her. Whoever it is, I have got to tell, show myself in this time that I believe this word. And I want to water so that God can, can continue to water me. And I'm not just looking for the unfortunate either. They could, have the, they could be two months ahead on their mortgage, and God says, you, you, you go ahead and do this. And guess what? I'll do it. So a lot of people look for, look, for, look for the crisis situation to release their seed. I, I don't care if it's crisis. I don't care if they're up. I don't care if my next-door neighbor I, who's got 45 cars. I don't, look, I just want to obey God. Me and my wife want to obey God because we want to become well-developed in the testing and the trying of our faith and come out on the other side and look at one another and go, we believe God through this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In closing. <clears throat> Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do <clears throat> in closing. I want, you, I want you to begin forecasting a future that holds nothing but good in it for you. I want you to begin forecasting a future that holds nothing but good in it for you. No doom and gloom. No what is my job going to do. No what is my in industry going to be like. No what is my church going to be like. No, no, I want you to start forecasting a future that has nothing but good in it for you. Will you have to make some adjustments? Sure. But in the adjustment, it's still good for you. Will you have to change some things? Will things be different over here in this industry? Yeah, probably. Maybe not. But if it is, guess what? I'm forecasting it's still good for me. It's still good for me. God only has, has good for me. I want you to start forecasting a future that holds only good for you. Number two. 
I want you, if you haven't already, to download those prayer confessions. Go to our website, click on prayer confessions on the home page, get those confessions, and start to get the word of God in you. Start to get the word of God in you. Somebody says, why do I need to adjust? You, you know, they, they said it's only 30 more days and this thing is going to turn around. What if it's four more months? What if it's six more months? I want you to get the word of God in you and hide that word in your heart. Download those prayer confessions and begin to say them every single day. Now, don't allow what the industry is saying, what your job is saying about your security. Don't allow that to cozen you and lullaby you to sleep and say to yourself, I'm exempt from having to do that. I'm telling you right now, get the prayer confessions, download them, and begin to say them to get that word in you. Why? Because the word is going to carry you through this. The word you have in you is going to carry, to carry you through this. Abiding in him and him abiding in you is going to carry you through this. I want you to download those prayer confessions. Number three, I want you to join us on the prayer calls. When Elder Sonia was praying, I, I, just, I just went outside right there on the patio, laid down on, on, on the, our patio sofa there, put that speakerphone to my ear, and I said, build me up, build me up, Lord. Uh, pr- 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 go ahead and pray, sister. And I was right there with her. Not word for word, but I do understand. Hey, 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 don't look over this. You're not exempt from this. Who do you think you are? Well, what are you doing? You mean tell me you're going to tune into to, to, to Ozark tonight and you didn't tune into the prayer call? Brother, you better get your priorities straight, Derek, and you better get on this call. I want you to get on those calls, put the speakerphone on, and just walk around and pray with your wife. I believe the most sexiest thing you could do is show your wife right now that you are a man of prayer. I don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Well, she want to hear that kind of stuff. What kind of stuff? You praying, leading the house in prayer, and leading your family in prayer. And on these prayer calls, I don't know how to pray. Well, know how to repeat after the person that's praying and confess with them. They're at 7 o'clock p.m. on Monday, 7 o'clock p.m. on Fridays, and they're for 30 minutes. And and you get a chance to build yourself up in the things of God through prayer. But please don't let the world tell you they need that. You're going to be okay. And and, and you 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 don't do what I'm saying to do. And I'm not like trying to tell you what to do. I'm just saying, as your pastor, I'm telling you, don't allow these deadlines that the world is giving you to cause you to come up off your faith and start going back to the world's promises. Don't do that. They've already shown you we will fail you. So hop on that prayer call. Prayer call. Download the confessions. Also, next week we're going to be doing small groups. I want you to participate in the small groups. You still have a church community. That's gathering around the word with technology. So be on the lookout for those emails. Be on the lookout for your, we're not calling them, we're calling them uh, uh, Excel encouragers. See, Excel encouragers are going to be running small groups. And they're there to encourage you in the things of God. Encourage you on what we talked about tonight. And you want to just hop in there with technology and get your faith built up to go through another day. To go through another day. Let me tell you something. My faith has been tried. When I relocated from Atlanta to Jacksonville, and we thought that house was going to sell, and that house did not sell. It didn't sell. And for some odd reason, something happened to the pipes under the kitchen floor, and it was leaking, and we didn't know it, and had to replace the whole floor, and had a mortgage down here and a mortgage in Atlanta, and I just knew that my little savings would take care of me. Let me tell you something. $18,000, 12 months Foo! Covering too much. Foo! Gone. I said, my God, what am I, what am I going to do now? And both of those babies became due. And, 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 and guess what? I had to reach out to somebody and say, hey, you, can, 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 you, can you just cover me to this thing sales? You had to reach out and say that? My God, what are you doing? See, number one, I, I told myself, I ain't going to touch my investments. I ain't going to touch this. I ain't going to touch that. But I tell you what, you can talk that mess all day long. When, 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 when that pressure is on you like it was on us, we, 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 we had just relocated, trying to get kids in school, two houses, two mortgages, trying to work through this thing. All we had was our faith. But when that savings account bleeded out, all of a sudden we realized, hmm, wow, we thought it was going to sell in 30 days. Hmm, took 11 months. So what I'm saying is, oh, he said it's going to be over in 30 days. By May, we're going to be. Man, my faith is right there with them on that. But I tell you what, put your prayer seeds in the ground. 
<laughs> Put your confessions on your mouth. What are you saying? Heaven takes care of me. Heaven takes care of me. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Were you blessed by the word of God this evening? I know you were. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Listen, I want to give you a couple of options here. Number one, if you want to be born again, click on that tab. We got people who want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. Number two, if you want to rededicate your life back to the Lord.